we are now on filters. So what are filters? This refers to colored disc of glass or disc of gelatin in which are placed in front of the camera lens to improve the quality of our images of or our pictures. These are a mixture of uh, uh, homogeneous liquids, which yung tumigas na, in which it absorbs or filters out some of the colors or the wavelengths of our electromagnetic spectrum. Again, depending on the filter that you are using and you are uh, at the moment needing. Now we have photographic filters. We have blue filters. This refers to photographic filters that are used effectively when photographing blood. Actually, blue filters and green filters are used, are both used in photographing uh, blood evidences. But then, uh, ang sabi dito, blue, uh, green filters are, uh, works better than blue filters in the terms of photographing blood. But then, they are both used and both utilized in um, police photography. So, pag hindi available yung blue filter natin, ginagamit ang green. Pero most of the time, ang ginagamit is blue filters. So, balik tayo sa blue filter. When used, when used outdoors, a blue filter will make the sky or any blue object appear in the photograph white. So, we have number two, we have green filters, which refers to photographic filters that are used in blue filters for uh, in the place of blue filters for photographing blood. Often, they works better than blue filters. But then, pag, ano, most, it, most of the time, ang ginagamit talaga is yung blue filters. And then, we have yellow filters. These are used for photographing uh, white vehicles or automobiles for, for the uh, details of that automobile to stand out. So we have the ultraviolet or UV filters. This refers to the photographic filters that screens out the ultraviolet end or the violet end of our electromagnetic spectrum. So ito yung mga mostly, yung mga UV filters natin, ito yung mga mostly kaagad-agad pag binili natin yung mga DSLRs natin or yung mga SLRs natin. Agad na siya naka-install. So no-brainer na pag meron kang DSLR, meron na kakabit kaagad na UV filter doon. And then, hindi lang siya nag-act as filter. It also acts as a, uh, kumbaga, screen protector sa lens natin to prevent it from, from scratches and abrasion. So, yun. And then, we have number five. We have neutral density filters. This refers to photographic filters that are used to cut down light transmission. So, both, uh, both neutral density filters and polarizing filters are used, are, are used in um, controlling the light that passes through the lens. So, ang pinagkaiba lang nito is yung uh, neutral density filters, kagaya ng kanyang name, uh, yung neutralize niya or, or nire-reduce niya yung light or yung intensity na uh, pumapasok sa lenses natin to prevent overexposure ng mga uh, images na kalalabasan ng ating cam na kinuhanan ng ating camera. And then, yung polarizing filters, kung kung uh, mahilig kayo sa mga shades dyan. Di ba pag misa pag magtatanayin tayo when we are picking up, picking out uh, sunglasses, most of the time natin kung polarized ba yung lens or polarizing shades na yun. So same as with this filter. This, the polarizing filter does is, is to suppress the glare. So yung, uh, for example, when we are photographing a very polished surface, hindi maiiwasan na magiglare yun. So, ang gagawin ng polarizing filters is yung um, i-reduce niya yung glare na yun. And then seven, we have the haze and skylight filters. This refers to photographic filters that are used to remove excess bluishness from distant view of the outdoors. And then we have number eight, the graduated filters. This refers to photographic filters that are clear at the bottom, graduating to the color at the top. Recommended in the situation in which the sky part of the scene is much brighter than the foreground. And then we have the correction filters, which refers to photographic filters that are intended to alter the response of the spectral sensitivity in the terms of the naked eye. Number 10, starburst filters. This refers to photographic filters that turn bright points of light into stars with up to 16 points. So, kung mapapansin natin pag gumamit tayo ng starburst, starburst filters, yung mga, for example na lang yung poste, eh, pag pinicturean nyo yung uh, light post, yung kalalabasan ng picture mong yun, parang pastar na yung light. 
And then we have the color filters. This refers to photographic filters that increase contrast in black and white photograph. It lets light of its own color pass through the lens to the film but holds back certain colors. As a result, objects that are the same color as the filter appear light in the picture and black colors are dark. Where are uh, where filters may be placed? We have the over the light source, which the usual position in photomicrography, in the front of the sensitized material, which involves the use of the layer filters for separation. I think pinaka common letter C between the lens combination. Now letter D behind the lens, in which is not advisable because of the image, is slightly placed in the one third of the thickness of the filter. And the letter E before the lens, which has the advantage of elimination effects at the same time maintain the image distance unchanged. Then we have filter factors depends on the absorption characteristics of the filter, subject, spectral sensitivity of the emotion, and process. Ayan. So, para hindi natin nababasahin, um, lens is most of the time made up of glass, plastic, or resin. So, resin, kung um, resin is an example nun, is yung mga T-square, ruler, yan. Um, so, ruler means I made it made up of plastic then. Pero ang pinaka the best na example for resin is yung T-square natin. Kung meron kayo mga kuya engineer dyan, yung T-square nila most of the time are made up of resin. So, uh, when we say lens, lagi yung tatandaan is that uh, it is the eyes and the heart of the camera. So, di ba sabi ko before sa chapter 1 natin, um, light is the most important element in taking uh, photographs, right? So, lens is the second so, ayun. So, most of the time, lens is classified or made up of two lens. Especially yung ginagamit natin sa camera natin, dalawang lens ang meron doon. Sa mga DSLR natin, sa mga SLRs natin, we have the convex and concave. Mamaya, as we go on or continue sa ating discussion, mapapagaralan natin or matatakal din natin ang concave and yung concave, uh, concave and convex lens. So, how does lens work? Para nag-work ang lens. Ang ginagawa niya is that um, kung, ano, kung ano yung pinoproject ng subject mo or ng location mo, yung light na tinatransmit nun is being processed by our lens or by the, uh, the lens of the camera. And then, yun yung ipoproject niya sa film strip or dun sa image sensor mo. So, yun. Without, again, ha, without light, kung walang light na nakikita or walang light na metatransmit ang lens mo, walang may image, walang image na ma-form or walang a uh, picture na, na ma-form. So yon, so we have two general classification of um, lens. We have simple lens and we have the uh, simple lens and the concave lens. We, under simple lens, we have the convex lens or the converging lens or the positive lens. A lens that is thicker at the middle and uh, thinner at the edge. It gathers light rays and refracts them to meet in a certain point. So, ang mangyayari niyan, um, depending on your location or your subject, yung mga light rays na tinatransmit ng subject mo or ng location mo through your lens. So, meron tayo picture dito. Ayan. This is your subject. For example, ito yung mga light rays na uh, tinatransmit niya sa convex lens niyo. And then what it does, it focuses into a focal point or focus. Ayun. So when we say naman concave lens or diverging lens, this is thicker at the edges and thinner at the center. Ang example nito is that ah, excuse me. Ang example nito is yung sa flashlight. Ibig sabihin, kabaligtaran lang niya ang convex lens. Ang convex ang convex lens, 'di ba? Ginagather niya yung light rays into a focus or into a focal point. What concave does naman is the opposite. Ang ginagawa niya is pinapalawak niya yung, uh, yung light. So, ang, ang, ang pinaka the best example dito is yung mga flashlights. Ayan. Ayan. Diba? Palabas ang uh, pinatransmit niyang light. Ayan. Pwede niyo itong i-screenshot uh, i for your reference para hindi kayo malito. Di ba, pag convex, converging, magpo-focus siya into a focus point or a focal point. And then, pag concave naman, ganyan. And then, we have compound lenses. Compound lenses, 
palagi natin tataan, narinig compound lenses. These are the combination of lenses. Most of the time, dito, compound lenses ang ginagamit ng mga DSLR natin and SLRs natin. Yun. And then, again, pwede nyo tong i-screenshot. This is the combination of lens by con con by convex, ibig sabihin dalawang convex lens and then plano, isang plane at isang uh, convex, positive meniscus, negative meniscus, plano cave, band cave. Pwede nyo siyang um, i-screenshot. And then under lens speed naman. So lens speed is the largest opening, largest opening of the diaphragm. Siyempre kung napag- uh, Uh, pinag-aralan nyo yung chapter 3, diaphragm was uh, mentioned. So, other name for diaphragm is yung aperture. Ayun, that light can pass through lens. Lens speed is important in taking pictures in dim light. Bakit? So, uh, next tayo. T two types of lens according to lens speed. We have the fast lens and the slow lens. And in fast lens, the lens with larger maximum aperture or the Uh, diaphragm. Di ba merong principle ang ano natin, ang aperture na, natin is that the smaller the F number, the bigger aperture opening. So, i-diverge i, i, i natin siya into fast lens. So, i-take down note nyo to ha. Um, meaning, di ba sabi niya, the larger maximum or diaphragm opening, the faster the lens. So, i-diverge i natin siya sa principle ng aperture. Meaning that the small f, the smaller f number, the bigger the aperture opening or the diaphragm opening, the faster the lens. Thus, di ba sabi niya dito, uh, taking pictures in dim light. Thus, the bigger the aperture opening, the more light it absorbs. Ibig sabihin, the more lighter or the more, mali, the more lilinaw yung uh, kalalabasan ng photograph mo. And then, um, uh, kabaliktaran naman yan nun yung uh, slow lens natin. So, pag, pag slow lens naman, the bigger the F number, the smaller aperture opening or the smaller the diaphragm opening, the slower the lens. And then, the lesser the light it absorbs. Okay? Anyways, itong principle na light, uh, lens speed natin, pwede ko siyang itype and then isi-send ko siya sa GC natin. I-remind nyo na lang ako. So, yan. Next tayo. And then we have the image size. Image size is most of the time dependent or very similar siya sa qualities of light natin, di ba? Um, we have the light, uh, we have the um, intensity, color, direction, yung part na quality. So same as with the image size. Image size is the overall, kumbaga, the overall product of your camera. Yung mechanism niya, kung paano mo siya ginalaw, or kung paano mo sinet up yung camera mo in, in its setting. And then, also, dun din sa subject mo or dun sa um, location mo. Also, image size is determined by the megapixel. Ibig sabihin yung camera na gamit mo. So, yun. And then, depth of focus. So, depth of focus This is the um, the range in which the image sensor can capture. So, wag kayo magpapalito about naman sa depth of field. Again, depth of field was mentioned sa chapter 3. So, depth of field naman, this is the range of the acceptable um, acceptable sharpness of the photo. Di ba? Dalawa yun. We have the shallow depth of field, we have the deep depth of field. Shallow depth of field is that, for example, ako yung subject nyo, sa kaya nakafocus yung camera, it means blurred yung sa likod. And then when you say deep depth of field, uh, lahat in focus. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya blurred uh, sa likod. Yun, I hope na nag-take down notes kayo. And then we have the hyperfocal distance. Hyperfocal distance naman is the distance between the image lens, uh, the camera lens, and yung subject na gusto mong kahanan. So that is hyperfocal distance. So, eto from the lens through the subject you want to capture. So that is the hyperfocal distance. And then we have the focal plane naman. Focal plane, for example, when you are taking videos, ayan, for example, ako, you are taking a, a photo of me, and then, eh, in focus na ako, no? For example, in focus na ako now, and then I would step back or move somewhere, ganyan. Di ba magiging bird ako? Me stepping back or me moving, uh, moving from side to side, I guess. 
is me being uh, away from the focal plane, me being out of focus. Ibig sabihin, uh, gumalaw ako, mawawala ako dun sa focal plane na dapat dun lang nakafocus. Ibig sabihin, yung focal plane, kung saan lang nakafocus yung camera mo. So, pag umalis ako or gumalaw ako, mawawala ako sa focal plane, mawawala ako sa focus. So, yun. And then, we have uh, the infinity, yung beyond dun sa subject mo. That is the infinity. And then we have the real focus and we virtual focus. Pag real focus, ito yung focus na tinatransmit ng convex lens. And then sa virtual focus naman is concave lens. Ayan, convergence and divergence. Para hindi kayo malito. Ayan, yung infinity, yung beyond dun sa subject mo. That is infinity. And then, ito, when you are maneuvering your ano, your lens, kasi focal plane is being controlled by the focal length. Mamaya, ma-discuss ma ma ko yan. So, uh, maneuver mo siya, magiging jam yung focus. Ibig sabihin, nandito, uh, sa, nandito ang focal plane mo. And then again, you can maneuver it sa bread naman nakafocus. Ibig sabihin, nandito na naman yung focal plane. And then again, you can maneuver it, mamove na naman ang focal plane, imamaneuver mo yung focal length mo, and dito na yung focal plane. So, yan. And then, we have the groups of lenses according to focal length or correct and characteristics. We have the focal length. Let's start it because picture ito. Uh, focal length. Ito. It is the distance of the lens through your sensor. Ibig sabihin, ito, focal length is the one that controls the focal plane. And then, ayan, we have the magnification, the size of the image formed by the lens, and then the angle of view. The angle of view naman, kung ano yung nakikita ng lens mo, kung ano yung tinatransmit na lens mo, dun sa, uh, sa subject mo or dun sa location mo, at kung ano yung lumalabas sa image sensor mo or dun sa film strip, that is your angle of view. Kung ano yung nakikita mo sa uh, um, viewfinder mo or sa image sensor. And then, Standard or normal lens. Lagi yung tatandaan, standard and normal lens is 45 to 60 millimeters. Baka siya tinawag na normal is very much the same or approximately the same with our eyes, which is 45 degrees in view. Yeah. And this is the angle of view. You can then man maneuver mo siya using your lens. Ito, yung mga photos niya, yung mga yun yung makikita mo when you're maneuvering your camera dun sa image sensor. Mo. And then, we have the characteristics of normal lens. Kahit basahin nyo na lang yan. Ito. Diba? Ito sa normal lens. And then, when we use wide-angle lens, kung mapapansin nyo, kung mga, may mga mahilig panood ng YouTube dito, yung mga vloggers natin, most of the time, they use wide-angle lens. Para mas may kita mo yung sceneries, ganyan, or mga nasa background mo. And sometimes, wide-angle wide lens makes you look slimmer. Kaya yun. And then, we have fish eye lens. Fish eye lens, all the time, ginagamit siya sa mga CCTV kasi mas, ma mas malaki yung sakop ng uh, camera when you use um, when you use a fish eye lens. Lens. Ayan. Diba? This is the whole room na. Ayan. And then, we have long or telephoto lens, kagaya ng sa chapter 1 natin. These are uh, used in surveillance or when you have to shoot something or someone in a uh, far distance. In masyado siyang malayo. And then, uh, yung mga lenses nito, again, kagaya ng chapter 2 natin, they are very big and very heavy. Heavy that requires, uh, most of the time, magumagamit ng mga long and telephoto lens. Lalo sa research ko, nire-research ko yung mga ibang uh, terms dito is that yung mga pictures nun, yung mga pictures na nakikita ko gumagamit ng telephoto lens most of the time, most of the time, lalaki sila. So, yun. Kasi mabigat. Ayan, ito yung mga um, products or yung mga image formed by a telephoto lens. And then, we have zoom lens. Pagayan din ang um, discussion ko sa chapter 1. Ayan. And then, macro lens. And a shift of perspective control lens. This is uh, advanced. So, kahit basahin nyo na lang din siguro ito. Then, lex, lens defects. Yung mga, mga errors na nakikita natin or mga problema na, 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 na nangyayari sa lens natin or sa camera lenses natin. We have aberrations. So, marami tayong aberrations na na, na, uh, na experience when we use our camera. So, aberration is the failure of light rays to focus properly after they have passed 
through the lenses. Yun. So, we have um, spherical, chromatic, we have astigmatism, coma, and flares. So, again, aberration is a minute variation in lenses and mirrors. And because different parts of the light spectrum are reflected or refracted by varying amounts. So, we have the spherical aberration. Diba? Kagaya ng discussion ko, uh, kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina about how lens work. Kasi yung arrow or yung light rays natin, okay, absorb, absorb siya ng lens mo and then it focuses into a, into a um, focus or a focal point. When we experience spherical aberration, ibig sabihin, yung mga light races, hindi sila nagkakatagpo. Hmm. Hindi sila nagkakatagpo. Parang, parang ang, ano nyo, the one that got away. Charot! So, yun. Ito yung normal functioning ng light races natin. Focal point, and when we experience spherical aberration, hindi sila nagkakasugto at hindi sila nagtatagpo. Yun. And then we have chromatic aberration naman. This is a failure of different colored rays to focus after passing through the lens. Ibig sabihin naman dito, kung sa spherical aberration, ang problema niya is hindi, nagtatak hindi nagtatagpo yung mga light races. And it's sa, ano naman, sa chromatic aberrations naman, failure of different colored light rays na hindi naman nagtatagpo. Ayan. Basandali lang siya intindihan. I think kinalabasan, ito yung uh, normal photo na walang aberration. And then dito, dito sa left side is when we experience chromatic aberration. Then we have astigmatism. Astigmatism naman, most of the time, nangyayari siya sa... Astigmatism, meron din yung mga tao, di ba? Yung tayo. When we experience astigmatism, di ba? We use glasses. Sa camera naman, um... Pag nagpo-focus ka ng isang bagay or ng subject, may time na naka-focus siya sa ibang bagay, may times na hindi. Ito. Ayan. Diba? Dapat ito, naka-focus niya, but then, meron ka makikita ganito. Out of focus. Ayan. And then, we have coma naman. Most of the time, ang coma nangyayari siya sa gilid-gilid ng camera mo. Pag nakaka-experience ka ng coma, kalalabasan ng image mo uh, sa parts niya, sa mga gilid-gilid, kagaya na sinabi ko kanina, is para siyang naka-spiral and then blurred. So, yun yung uh, coma. Example dito sa picture na to, etong part na to, blurred and then medyo spiral siya. So, that is coma. And then we have curvature of field. Ito naman, um, when you are picturing a building, ganyan kung kinukahanan mo yung isang building na Napaka-flat lang naman niya, pero pag lumabas siya sa uh, image sensor mo or pag i-develop mo na siya, nagiging curved siya, kaya curvature of field. Ayan. etong part na to, naka-curve na. Kung ko-compare mo dito sa part na to. Okay? And then, we have distortion. Meron tayong dalawa. We have barrel distortion and pin caution. So, this is your normal. Ito yung normal na, normal na uh, pre-process ng lens mo. And then, normal din yung lala, kalalabas na ng picture mo. When we experience distortion, nagiging ganito yung pag when we say barrel, nagiging parang yung edges niya nagiging soft. Yan. And then, we have the pin caution naman, parang, alam mo yun, nakalubog yung kalalabasan ng camera mo. And then, we have other lens defects. We have flare and mechanical. A uh, flare and flare or optical flare, ito yung mga bilog-bilog na nakikita natin sa camera. Parang light races uh, pag sa camera, ito, ito. Ayan, ito. Ito naman, yung flare and optical flare, maiiwasan naman to when we use um, a lens hood. Yung kumbaga yung lens mo and then meron pang uh, other uh, accessory na ikinakabit sa lens mo. Parang siyang bubong for your lens. So, ayan. And then we have mechanical flare. Mechanical flare naman, uh, ito na mismo, yung sa lens na mismo dito yung problema. Um, kung makaka-experience kayo ng mechani mechanical flare, dapat kailangan mo na siyang dalhin sa um, camera shop para ma-check up. Kasi uh, mismo sa lens na yung defect nito. When we say uh, mechanical flare. And then light loss naman. Uh, ang light loss, most of the time nangyayari siya sa mga 
macro photography, zoom lens photography, sa sobrang, uh, sa sobrang zoom niya, yung light, yung light na tinatransmit nung subject or nung location, hindi na nakaka-abot sa lens. So, yun. And then we have stray up light, stray, stray, stray light, it can be reduced or eliminated by using proper lens. Stray places on the front of lens or shield. So, so, next, we have um, film. So, this refers to a cellulose tape or plate where silver salts are suspended that are capable of recording light. It is only a fraction of an inch. It's a sobrang nipis lang nito. Yet, it is made up of many layers. It is also called as a sensitized material. It is a sheet of plastic coated with an emulsion. So, what is emulsion? This is a mixture of a light-sensitive materials which is made up of dissolving silver bullion in nitric acid to form silver nitrate crystals. Pero ang sabi dito, silver halides. So, before, yung mga panahonan pa ni na Joseph Nimse, Luis de Gire, Fax Talbot, they were using um, silver nitrate crystals or silver nitrate. Pero come 1950s, one of our pioneer brands, which is the uh, Kodak, by 1950, they stopped manufacturing silver nitrate crystals or silver nitrate-based film because um, silver nitrate is very combustible, which is they are extremely um, quick to be burned. So, konting, ano lang, konting exposed lang sa sunlight or sa init, uh, pwede na silang mag ng fire. So, also, it contains substances that are used in explosive, kanya siguro mabilis siyang uh, masunog. So, after 1950s, nag-stop na yung Kodak na mag-manufacture ng silver nitrate-based film, uh, silver halide na nun ang ginamit nila, silver halide salts, bonded with gelatin. Continue tayo with variables, crystal sizes that are determined the sensitivity and resolution. So sensitivity, ito yung the amount of light or the amount of exposure uh, that is needed by the image to be, um, to be produced. So pag sinabi natin the high sensitivity, it requires less, less exposure than the uh, low sensitivity film. And then we have the resolution naman. This is the detail within the image. You know, the smoothness of the photograph, the continuous tone, and the accuracy of the color. When the emotion is subjected to sufficient exposure to light, it forms the Latin image. Latin image, ito yung mga uh, kinukuhatan natin na hindi pa natin na i-develop. Same as sa uh, nasabi ko sa previous um, discussion natin, which is yung mga Latin fingerprints. Ito yung mga prints na naiiwan natin sa mga bagay-bagay na hindi pa natin na-lift or hindi pa natin na i-develop. So, same as with the Latin image. Chemical, na kailangan pang dumaan sa sinasabi nating uh, film developing. Yun. These chemical processes can be then applied to film to create a visible image in the process of film developing. So next, we have the structure of black and white film. We have a number one top coating, varnish coating, or protective coating. This refers to the top layer, scratch-resistant coating, gelatin coating, an overcoating composed of thin, transparent layer of hard gelatin, which helps to protect the silver halide emulsion from scratches and abrasion. So, kumbaga yung top coating, kung iahalin tulad natin ito sa mga cell phones natin, ito yung screen protector. And then, the emulsion layer, this refers to the structure of film that composed of silver halides and gelatin, a layer, of, a layer composed of silver compounds which are light sensitive, and halogens such as bromide, chlorine, iodide, which is used in small amounts, seldom made from than 5% with silver bromide in fast film emulsion. So yung emulsion na sinasabi dito, kung ihahanin tulad rin natin siya sa mga cellphones natin, ito na yung mismong screen. And then we have the um, film-based backing or base. This refers to the structure of film that is made up of cellulose, uh, cellulose acetate or other materials such as paper, plastic, which supports the emulsion layer and is coated with a non-curl or anti-halation backing. So, um, itong film base, this is the um, foundation of the um, yung mismong film natin. Siya yung nag-hold sa top coating, emulsion, and nung backing na mismo. So, yung, uh, this is mostly paper or glass. Ganun. And then we have the anti-halation 
backing or anti-helation backing layer or yung anticurl. This refers to the black dye applied on the rear, rear surface of the film. It absorbs light that can penetrate through the emotion layer to prevent it from reflecting back to the emotion, thus making the image sharper since the suppressed double image and prevents the appearance of the halo formation in the photograph. So, um, ang ginagawa ng anti-helation, it reduces the amount of the irrelevant light that can be reflected back to the camera through the emotion. And then, ito. Ito yung layers niya. So, yung manipis na film na yun, yun yung kumbaga magnified version niya. Ito yung mga layers ng ating black and white film. So, we have the colored film naman. Next, the structure of colored film. So, basically, they are both the same with the top coating, emotion layer, anti-helation coating, and film base. Basically, the same lang sila with the black and white. So, ang pinagkaiba lang niya, uh, kagaya ng kanyang, ano, ng kanyang pangalan, may mga colors lang na idagdag, which is the blue, yellow, green, and red. So, when we say blue filter, this refers to the uh, filter that is sensitive to blue light only. Green and red light passes through it without exposing the color highlights. And then we have the yellow filter, also known as Carey Leia Silver, suspended in gelatin. It is coated between the top and the second layer to absorb the penetra anything, any penetrating blue light but allowing the green and red light pass through. And then we have the green filter. This is the orthochromatic layer. Mamaya may explain natin kung ibig sabihin ng orthochromatic layer. The layer sensitive to blue light, which cannot reach it. And green, but not the red. Red, red light passes through the bottom of the uh, emotion layer. And then we have, lastly, the red filter. This refers to the panchromatic layer, the panchromatic filter, sensitive to blue and red. It is also somewhat sensitive to green, but not as such the degree, which is not important. Next. Then this is the film structure of the colored film. And then we have according to use. Black and white film, this refers to the film intended for black and white photography, very basic. And then we have the color film used for color negatives for prints. And then we have the chrome film, this refers to films with names ending in chrome for color transparency for slide films that are exposed by slides mounted in the cardboard for slide projectors. So itong chrome film, nakikita na ako nito one time, ito yung para siyang... Uh, band paper like which is uh, clear and then yung image mo dun nakaprint or yung document mo dun nakaprint and then isasay mo siya sa isang uh, projector and then mga magnify yung document na yun or yung image na yun. And then we have the x-ray film, very basic. This is, this, is the, ano, this refers to the material which is sensitive to x-ray region of our electromagnetic spectrum. And have the, according to spectral sensitivity or color sensitivity, we, number one, we have the monochromatic film. This refers to film that is sensitive to a single color of light. Ibig sabihin, kaya nga sinabi monochromatic, ibig sabihin, isa at isang kulay lang. So we have the blue sensitive film and the ultraviolet sensitive film. Blue sensitive film, uh, kaya nga sinabi blue sensitive, sensitive siya sa blue lights only. And then we have the UV sensitive film, sensitive siya sa UV rays only. And then we have the panchromatic film. To sum this uh, long definition, panchromatic film is sensitive to UV light rays and all lights or colors that are visible in the electromagnetic spectrum, which are the uh, violet, blues, greens, yellows, orange, and red. Pero uh, very sensitive siya only in the um, blues and violet. So dun siya most sensitive ang panchromatic film. And then we have the orthochromatic film. Again, to sum this definition out, orthochromatic film is sensitive to UV light, UV lights, blues, and greens. And then yung mga nakukuha niyang red colors, nagiging dark siya pag inano mo, pag dinevelop mo. And then we have the infrared film. This is sensitive to all colors in our electromagnetic spectrum. And it is also used in um, blackout photography for our question document examination. So we have the last, our non-chromatic film. This refers to film that is sensitive to the ultraviolet and blue-violet colors only and may be used when natural radiation is not important. For example, if you use a copy 
black and white originals and the photographs colorless subjects when extreme contrast is needed. Next, we have special film for special purposes. We have uh, number one, contrast process, panchromatic film. This refers to the fine grain of film that gives a sharp uh, differences between black and white used in copying documents and photographing fingerprints. And then we have number two, contrast process or trachromatic film. This refers to the film which is similar to panchromatic, but much slower and more sensitive to blue and red light. And then we have the infrared film. This refers to the film that is sent sensitized with color dyes to make it possible to record uh, only visible infrared heat waves. Also sensitive to blue light, so special filters have to be put over the lens. So ang infrared film natin, ginagamit din siya for pag yung scene mo or yung location mo is foggy and very hazy. So yung when we use infrared film, it can penetrate to uh, smoke, fog, and haziness. So yun. And then we have the very high speed film. This refers to the film that is particularly valuable for law enforcement purposes. This is labeled only with uh, number 2475. It is useful for taking pictures at night. It has a ASA 800 to 2000. So that is the end of our discussion. Thank you very much and have a great day.